This wasn't a mistake. This was not just an oopsie daisy. This was full on deception. It's Sophia Franklin. You are listening to Sophia with an F and the F is for phenomenal. (laughs) Hi, everybody. Welcome to the show. I am super, super excited this week. Before we jump into the episode, subscribe, please, because I am way, way, way more entertaining on camera. I know it's hard to believe because of how entertaining I am just through your ear holes, but I really am incredible (laughs) on screen. So go ahead, um, subscribe. And I'm very excited to introduce Katie Maloney, my guest this week. Hi, Katie. How are you? Oh, hi. Hi. Hey. So Katie, very good friend of mine, also star of Vanderpump Rules. And Katie, you are in New York right now. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for coming. You were just filming Watch What Happens Live, right? Yes. How did it go? It went good. I love doing Watch Happens Live. It's such like a fun. You you came. Yeah, when I came. me and Lala were on. Um, but yeah, it's such a fun show. It I goes was, by so fast though. Yeah, it goes by so fast. I was gripping the seat like this <laughs> because doing something live seems terrifying. It's. I mean, you just have to be so present mm-hmm. and so on. You can't really stop and think and take a beat. You have to just have just off the. Yeah, right. Tough right there. Yeah. So what if you accidentally say the F word? That's that's had to have happened. Yeah, um, it's never happened with me. Um okay, I don't know. I think <laughs> <laughs> which is surprising because I I do swear all the time. But I don't know. I think there's just something um that just goes into my brain when I go to do that show that just just it's like an automatic filter or sensor that happens where I just Shut off swear words. That makes sense. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like a job interview. <laughs> yeah. This, <laughs> there are certain things you cannot say. I just go into like my settings mm-hmm. and just like switch switch it off. Oh my God. You're like a little computer. Yeah, a little iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Katie. So there has been drama everywhere. Oh my God. Congrats on the MTV award. Right? That's that insane. Crazy? Uh, it's so it's so wild. I'm, I'm, I am bummed, you know, obviously support the, the writer's strike. Oh, right. And everything. Right. Um, but yeah, it, you know, such a cool moment for us and it would have been great to, you know, have this whole award show. We were supposed to present award as well. And to be able to accept an award, you know, Um, on stage and everything would have been a very cool moment for us. And it's still really incredible that we were, you know, honored and, and won that award, but it was, it felt like, so 2020 doing virtual acceptance, like like a COVID COVID acceptance. So, okay. So you guys got the award, but because of the writer's strike, they didn't do a, so yeah, they, they canceled. Um, they didn't have live audience. They didn't do live presentation. They didn't have red carpet. They just didn't have like a show. Oh, essentially they had pre taped some stuff, you know, like, uh, like little bits and stuff with Drew Barrymore, like pre, pre, pre everything. So they still had that stuff to use. And she dropped out. Yeah. She, she dropped out. Yeah. Which is dope. That's like, I yeah. really commend her for that. I mean, I think, you know, it's, it's important. We're, we are in non-scripted, but I still have a lot of friends that are writers and that, of course. you know, that are actors and everything. And so I, I support the movement and I support fair wages for writers. And I, you know, I know Lala had, um, made a public statement and everything. And I just, I had a feeling, I had a feeling it was going to go this way anyway. Yeah. And Wait, it, what did Lala say? Um, just that she was going to just opt out from going to the, is that? <laughs> you know what? This is authentic New York. You guys, I know, but okay. You can't hear the sirens. I know. But so, so when we filmed the show, um, we hold for sirens and for stop. helicopters. So like, it's like, so when I'm talking and I hear sirens, I automatically just stop talking. <laughs> audio so you probably do that in like your just daily life like if you're on a date <laughs> if you're on a date and an ambulance goes by you just go mute no but if I'm recording something I, I okay, you know it's okay. just again it's like these weird like little like right like program no, neurosy kind of things that I have that just will kick in automatically that is so yeah. interesting I mean what's the issue I mean yes the obvious issue is it will fuck up the sound quality and you won't be able to hear you guys, but does it really? Does well, it actually? It's just cleaner. Yeah. It's easier. But like. Post. I get it. 
actually my team always gets mad at me because I will like <laughs> so. be coughing. I will make so many sounds and I won't care. And I'm like, it's authentic. It's real. It's genuine. And they're like, People it's don't. A mess. <laughs> it's, a, it's a disaster. Yeah, I think if I think until you probably like work, and I don't work in post, but I think it's just easier just to get it clean. Okay, you know what I mean. All right, all right, I get it. Everybody, get off my back. I understand. <laughs> no sirens, no sounds. Okay. Uh. So, um, the MTV award. So how did you find out? You get a text, a phone call that we had won. Mm-hmm. Um. So I, yeah, I was, I was on my way back from, from Europe and they had told me that they were canceling the show. I was like, mm, I have a feeling they're like, but they're going to be doing virtual, like, you know, acceptance speech or, you know, and I was like, okay, cool. They so said they were canceling the show. They're basically, they're canceling live presentations, live audience, the red carpet was canceled. So I was like, okay. Oh my God. Okay. I thought you were talking about Vanderpump for a second. No, no, oh, no, almost, no, 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 no. MTV. So, so yeah. I almost so, fell to the ground. Okay, no. I'm, with you. I'm on planet earth and I'm here with you. Okay. No. And so, um, they're like, but we're going to be doing, they're going to be still doing like live acceptance speeches. And I was like, okay. So <laughs> is that like. How does that work? How does that apply to me? You know, like, uh-huh. well, why do I need to know this? And they're like, and I was like, so when do, we, they're like, we found out that, to, you know, that mm. you guys won. I was like, oh. Mm. So, yeah. Um, and, okay. Did you do a speech? Well, we just, we, so Lala, I, um, she recorded one on her own because she went to Palm Springs um, for the weekend. And then me and Sheena and Ariana got together. Mm-hmm. Um and did one together as well. Cute. Was, yeah. That's a huge moment. It was. Because yeah. how long has the show been on air? For 10 seasons. For 10 Insane. years. Insane. Yeah. The Kardashians are on season what? 49. I don't know. Oh, forever. <laughs> like 20 something, literally 20. But they, but they do multiple seasons in a year. Like they film, like they film, uh, I don't know how many weeks on then take a break and then weeks on. So like they kind of do in, and that's like their structure. It. Ours is different. We, Wait, so how often do you film? Um, typically it's, it's over the summer. Um, and it's about, they need you guys slutty. They need you guys showing, <laughs> showing, showing the bod. Um, yeah, it's, it's anywhere from like nine to 12 weeks. Okay. Usually. Yeah. Once a year. Mm-hmm. But then it's like, but then that's like our, for our principal photography, which is like the main run of everything. Mm-hmm. And then sometimes we do our like interviews, you know, um, that mostly, mostly we do post, all of that because we film so much that once they start cutting episodes together, that's when we typically do that because we don't know what's going to make it in, obviously. So uh-huh. to start talking about everything that's happened would be a massive waste of time and money and resources. So right. that usually starts to happen um, afterwards. And then sometimes there's pickups if there's some if there's something that didn't make sense or something that Wait, we what need does to- that mean a pickup? Um, like a pickup shoot, like like a like a, a scene to pick up. I don't, for some reason, I don't know what that means. Yeah, they just call it a pickup, like a like, like they're, they're picking up something that they oh, need. like they're gonna use it type thing. Yeah, like like a scene that to 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 fill in somewhere. To what? To fill in in a oh, place. Oh, oh, okay. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. It's not necessarily like a reshoot of something, but sometimes like when they're putting something together, they're like, right. we're, there's a hole missing here yeah. that we need to like make sense or to support something yeah. that's happened. Like maybe there was like an event that's happening and it's not making full, mm-hmm. it's like something to support the story to move Got it forward. It. So as they're editing things together, they're like, we really need something that we missed mm-hmm. that we didn't think that we, or that we didn't get to get to. Yes. So like, yeah. Well, how often are you being filmed? Is it around the clock, 24 hours? No, we, I mean, we definitely have schedules because as much as it's like, you know, it is real for sure. Um, well, yeah. There's, there's also like, you know, the, there's an entire crew of, of there's multiple crews. Mm-hmm. So that have, that have, need to have schedules and, and, um, need to adhere to hours and cannot go over those hours. So, and there's also permits and there's, there's way more, um, planning that goes into it. So mm-hmm. we film, um, it's usually Tuesday to Saturdays. Okay. Um, and it, de- it, uh, it really depends on what's happening, like the, the organic story and dramas and everything that's happening. So right. it, and, and that's, and the schedule does change. Like sometimes like, 
I'll, you know, get like a very, very loose schedule of like things that they're kind of planning that they want to do. But let's say we go out for drinks one night and I'll, let's say I get into a huge fight with like Tom or something. Mm-hmm. Well, the next day my schedule could look very different because they're oh now they need God. to, now they need to follow what's happening there. The fallout from that, or, you know, just right. so it can, it can all vary and change. Like sometimes I, I film just like once that day. Um, sometimes I'm filming all day long. I'll film something at home and then I'll go film something with like Lala. We'll go have like lunch. And then maybe that night I'm filming something at Tom Tom. So like that, that can be very, yeah. This is fascinating to me because I really thought like reality television, it's either 24 hours, you know, love is blind Mm -hmm. and they are suing, right? The production company. Did you hear that? Yeah. Cause they're like run ragged. I yeah. Heard that, yeah. And they were allowed, they sleep deprivation. <laughs> they couldn't get access to food, water. They were like just plummeted with alcohol, like all of these things. <laughs> and so I thought that was one version of reality TV. And then you have like the Kardashians where well, it's like, you know, the Kardashians, <laughs> their schedule is not around whatever drama is happening. No, I, I think you that, know? well, I think the Kardashians are their own, like league. They're, they're, yes. they do their own version of everything. Mm-hmm. But I think, you know, when it's things like love is blind or bachelor or anything like that, where they're sequestered or they're staying in a location, they're staying in a house. They're mm-hmm. sta- you know, it can be a very different kind of situation or schedule. Yeah. So I don't know. That's wild though. They still shouldn't be like that. They shouldn't just be just because they can change out crews that the talent needs to stay no, on is terrifying. not right. Not right. It's terrifying. And this actually just reminded me of something. I got a call from my agent and that sounded very annoying the way I just fucking said that. It, it actually wasn't even my agent, but it's an agent at the well, agency I work with. I mean, with. why would it be weird if you have an agent to get a call from your agent? You can say that. I'm, it's just my agent, my manager. Okay. It's like, shut up. But um, <laughs> he calls me and I want to say the name of the show is so bad. So bad. Can I say it? No, because it won't be out yet. Anyways, the name of the show is insane. But he calls me and he says, hey. Is this show that's out already? No. Oh, okay, okay. The, but the filming is going to wrap up in like a week. And he calls me and he says, hey, would you be able to leave for Australia? I know what show it is. <laughs> Were you asked to go on it? No, but Tom did it. Wait, Tom went on it? He's literally there right now. Stop. Katie, stop. I'm dying. Is it the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you imagine if you, you were, were there. And, oh, oh my god! Okay. Well, I heard like he also <laughs> told me to not say these names, but I'm not saying the name of the show. Like Scott Disick, uh, Ronda Rousey, like some Tom like, Schwartz. <laughs> yeah, Tom Schwartz. Dude, that would be. Did they so- say? Did they bring his name up? No, oh, wow. they didn't bring his name up. But they brought up like some big names. Tanache. It's already been announced. So like it's. Oh wait, like, has, can I say the name of the show? It's literally been announced. Is there's like there's press about it? Okay, stars on Mars. Yeah, William Shatner's <laughs> William Shatner's like hosting it. Okay, when my agent called me and said there's a show called Stars on Mars, <laughs> I literally almost like chucked my phone across the room, and then. <laughs> he starts listing these names Mm. and then I'm like, Oh, like, okay. And he told me the budget, like the range. And he was like, you would have to leave for Australia in two days. And I'm like, okay, so where are they at with filming? And he's like, I think they only have two and a half weeks left of filming. And they're like wrapping up. Like it's like urgent. And I was thinking to myself, why are they literally like he he probably like speed dialed you know a hundred people at the agency right like a hundred talent to ask them to go on the show and I'm like why are they hurrying and shipping people out to Australia when they have two and a half weeks left of filming what is happening on Mars slash Australia, (laughs) they're like having to like do this, you know, 
emergency situation? That's a very good question. Can we ask? Can yeah, we ask I'm, gonna, I'm gonna find out. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna call him when we go to drinks after this. Well, he, I don't know, it's like 14 hours or something ahead, but like he'll be back tomorrow. Really? So how long was he there? He left on like the 23rd or something. He hasn't been, it's not that long. He's okay. a, it's only a couple weeks. So it's not, I don't think maybe you got the call like, I don't know when you got a call, but like. It was like on Tuesday. I mean, it was like four days ago. What? Yes, that's what I'm saying. I was, I, that's why I was a little bit oh, like, wow. okay. what's happening there? Is this like a love is blind situation and people are literally like running like out of a haunted house, <laughs> like <laughs> like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, like sprinting through the fields, getting out of this. Mars is crazy, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. Like the thing is, I, I just literally know so such minimal. I just knew Tom was going to Australia to do the show. And then I saw the release and the photos <laughs> and, <laughs> and William Shatner of it all and the premise and who, and then the, the release of like, who was there. And Lisa Rinna's on it. Wait, Lisa Rinna. Yes. Are you I, sure? Yes. Cause may, maybe they didn't tell everyone, but I saw like who was on it. Well, I think people are on it and leave and there's new people that come in and leave. Like, I maybe, don't yeah, know. Maybe the new people come in. Yeah. Cause of the, the initial people, there was like Ariel Winter, Tom. Oh, Tom Lance, was the original. Lance the Armstrong, <laughs> Ronda Rousey, a couple football players. Yeah. Marshawn Lynch. Yeah. Tallulah Willis. You know what really turned me off? It, it wasn't even the money. It wasn't the even. The, <laughs> do I have to wear an... A helmet, an astronaut suit, and a helmet. Something like that. Is yeah. that what they wear? They were wearing some kind of like space no. station kind of like dude, some kind of like. Dude. <laughs> I'm not, do I'm not, you know, I've never been on TV and that's not going to be my, you know, debut coming, my debut on TV <laughs> in a hazmat astronaut suit holding the helmet like this, you no. know? You want some like. Too hot to handle. Shit. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Right. So I can make a name for myself. <laughs> yeah. Cause all I'm worth is my body at the end of the day. You, ob- you want to objectify yourself. Exactly. Uh-huh. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. Obviously. Yeah. Okay. That is so funny. You knew exactly what I was talking when about. When you were like the name, I just, and when you said Australia, I was like, mm. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm very excited to know. I'm very excited to watch that show now. Very June fifth. I can't. Why are we promoting this? Show? I don't know. I'm not getting paid. What about like remind me of? So Vanderpump. <laughs> oh Vanderpump. <laughs> oh, okay. You know that show that you're on. Oh yeah. What did it? What does this remind me of? Oh yeah, Vanderpump Rules. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> rewind for a second. There's been a lot of drama. Right. So much, and. I don't want to just like go in circles talking about it. I like did an episode with Lala, but I'm very interested to hear from your point of view because Mm. I've watched you and the whole you, Tom Schwartz and Raquel, that whole dynamic is so shocking to me. I mean, the Raquel and Tom Sandoval dynamic is horrifying. Yeah. Horrifying. But even, you know, your dynamic with her and your Mm ex-husband is insane. Yeah. You know, especially now looking back, because during that time, you know, I was going through like a, a healing journey and trying to take care of myself with not a ton of support around me. I, you know, I had like Lala, I had Christina and, you know, there was people that like alone one-on-one were loving and supporting of me, but like as a whole, as a group, no, not really. And then there's people that were really actively being pretty malicious and awful towards me. And this was again, not just like a breakup of like some dude I dated. This was an untangling and, uh, you know, breakdown of a 12 year relationship and of a marriage of, you know, nearly six years. years. And there was just not a lot of compassion and not a lot of empathy shown towards me, towards shorts. Yeah. Like everyone was like, oh, he just seems like he really needs the support. You seem to be doing great. You seem to be doing fine. I'm like, just because I seem to be doing whatever you think I am, doesn't mean that I don't need that. Doesn't mean I don't have days or times where I would be great to like have that kind of support or just like have a hug or have, you know, like you don't see me 
and and I and I I'm not the type of person that will often I, I can be a little like tough around you know, mm-hmm. the edges and I put on that say that the the brave face because that's sort of like my defense defense mechanism. Right? Yeah. And that, you know, and that's, and that's part of like my like healing journey of like, of, of doing the law of assumption, like already assuming that I was like living that life that I wanted to be in. So like, if I was like wanting to be happy, I was going to be already like living a happy life. It doesn't mean that I didn't have like really dark times or wasn't really upset and everything like that. So what people saw was just me always smiling, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so to have people like Raquel and Tom and even like Sheena just really go out of their way yeah, to disrespect my feelings when I made it very clear, abundantly clear that, you know, Tom and Raquel engaging in any kind of activity, making mm-hmm. out, whatever, would be very hurtful to me. And, and really inappropriate. And there's, you know, there's, there is some debate about me um, and Tom's agreement of, of boundaries. And of, hooking up with other people. Within this group, it being, you know, me placing rules and trying to control Tom. And that's never what it was. Mm-hmm. Like, I, Tom, he, he was free to hook up with her if he wanted. It's just Tom also really wanted to have a friendship with me. And coming out of a divorce and coming out of like going straight into being friends is a challenging thing to do and not always the best choice and not always the healthiest choice. So in order to do that, this was like the one thing I needed. I was like, if we're going to do this, hooking up with someone in this friend group is going to just, it's, it can't happen. And he was like, no, I don't even want to. So like, this doesn't even need to be a conversation. I'm like, great. Then we Why does the public not see that as like the most obvious rule number one? Let's not fuck each other's friends. Well, because they're like, well, you were never friends with Raquel. Okay, fine. Then we're so fine. Raquel and I weren't friends. Fair. We're in close quarters. Well, we're close. We work together. We're on a television show. So, do you think? Do you? So fine. So then I have to like talk about this for six plus months constantly on repeat. Do you think that's fair to me? Like, I'm not doing that to Tom. Everything I was doing was. Off his front porch, out of his eyesight. This is the comparison. It reminds me of, no doubt, the band. (laughs) Yes. Gwen Stefani Mm -hmm. was dating. I don't remember his name, but he was the guitarist. Was his name Tony, was it? Or, uh, no, not Tony. Um, Yes, I know who you're talking about. Yeah. And I think there was a... Similar situation, Stevie Nicks and the guitars. But let's let's focus on No mm-hmm. Doubt, right? Yep. No Doubt. Gwen Stefani was absolutely in love with the guitarist. Mm-hmm. And this is when they were the band, No Doubt. Yep. So they are traveling together, performing together. Imagine if, you know, Gwen Stefani then went and fucked the drummer, like, that's the way I see it. That, well, like, that's not cool. That's and then, not okay. And then when they do press, the guitarist has to talk about, you know, and it's like right. every question he's asked, it, and, you know, it's, it's yeah, you just don't. And, and everyone says, like, well, this is Vanderpump rules. Like, this is everyone always dates. I'm like, right. But when we were younger, sure. But I, Tom and I, I wanted us to try to, like, honor what we had. And mm-hmm. it was, again, it was a, it was a, over decade long relationship, can we not cheapen it by hooking up with some chick that just <laughs> came along and yeah. like who he barely knows? Who like we all, we all like as far as we're concerned, Tom and I didn't have the kind of friendship with her that everyone else did. We didn't really know her that well. Mm-hmm. When her and James broke up, you know, I felt for her and like I had reached out to her and like you know I was trying to like have a friendship with her and. I was actively working towards that and was very gracious towards her, even though she was pursuing my ex. You know, I still gave her so many opportunities. You did. Oh my God. I remember that scene and she says to your face, Mm. I tried to make out with Schwartz and you're like, okay, well that's not really cool and forgave her. Like you gave her so much grace. Yeah. And she still wants to say that I bullied her in Vegas because we like, Comments about the galaxy lights. It's like, <laughs> the light. uh, like if that is, yeah, w- if that's bullying, then we're all in trouble. Right. But, but yeah, I mean, it's just this, this summer was kind of a nightmare because of just 
everything that went down. And, and in, in Mexico, when Tom and I had that dinner to, you know, just celebrate the closing of our house, it was also, that week was also what would have been our sixth wedding anniversary, which is like, you know, we're trying not to celebrate it, but it was just like, it was such a strange sort of ominous week because yeah. when, when you go through all those first after you get divorced, like holidays, all those things that you'd spent a decade celebrating with a person. And now it's like, you're just not, you, you don't know what to do with yourself. It's mm-hmm. such a weird, weird thing to experience. And so that week in particular was a really difficult week for me. Mm-hmm. So for us to like have that weird dinner where he acted the way he acted. And then, you know, the next day essentially, kiss Raquel oh my god it was just such a slap in the face and then for him to turn around and say like what I didn't do anything wrong I'm single I can do what I want I'm like that's right you can do whatever you want yeah but don't you don't like you, you can't you can't turn around and say that's not disrespectful when yeah. we've talked about this like I don't know what's like it's just a, a piece missing with all these people it's just like you can't just do whatever you want to do again like of course you can do whatever you want to do I can go into 7-Eleven over there mm-hmm. and rob it. But if I don't think that there's not going to be consequences if I get caught, I'm stupid. Mm-hmm. There's consequences. We can all do whatever we want to do, but there's going to be consequences if, if that behavior is reckless. Well, it shouldn't. I'm sorry. It's like I went through. No, I can't even, I can't <laughs> even compare my situation to yours at all. But this is very recent. I... I am going through a breakup. It's we've been broken up for a month, maybe a little bit more. And I had to record with a girl that my ex used to fuck <laughs> very recently. And she probably has no idea. Oh, that so she doesn't she's she has, she has oh. no idea that I was dating him, excuse me. But even just having to, like, interview her during the podcast, it was, like, a little bit, like, like it, it wasn't the best feeling in the world. She did nothing wrong. He did nothing wrong. But just having to do that, that fresh after the breakup, your situation is this times 100. You're having wow. to watch it go down. But watching it now, given everything that's gone down – I feel like massively vindicated. Yes, I was so gonna say. I watch it and I'm just like, right, ew. <laughs> like, you all like mm-hmm. are gross. Yeah. Like, I'm so much better off. Like, I knew I was better off, but it's just like, it's just so gross. <laughs> it truly really is gross. Like it's gross. Schwartz specifically, or just the whole. The, the, di- the, the, the crew and the dynamic of it all. It's just like you, like, you know, Tom, you know, his decision to make out with her just to what, stick it to the man. I, I that's, just, what's his, that's what he says, stick it to the man. I don't think like, anything he says he means. I think he's very lost. No, he is. Because he's just like still to this day, he just like doesn't, he he doesn't have a clue. Like he's he doesn't on Mars. Under, he does, he's on, <laughs> he, he's like literally <laughs> truly in space. Like, like literally, metaphorically, like he really is in space because like even now, like, he he texted at one point. He's just like, I like want to like hang out. I miss you. Like no agenda. And I'm just like, I don't like withholding friendship with you. But it's like the fact that you just don't understand boundaries and respect. Mm-hmm. And just like don't have any of it for me. Like it's I'm not trying to, like uh, like to be that person here. But like in friendship, period. If one of my just friends, period, like platonic male female were to disrespect me like that, I wouldn't be friends with them either. Mm, so like, no. what, like he, the, you know, even like in his friendship with Tom Santa, who he lets him steamroll him. Yeah. Yeah. And treat him like that. So it's like, you just don't get it. No. And I just, I don't. When is he going to get it? I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm talking about him. Like I've met him. <laughs> like I know the whole thing. I don't but. know what it's going to take, but it's just like right now, like, I don't really have time for that. Like, and I don't have to deal with that. Like I dealt with, I was dealing with it for so long that, Mm -hmm. you know, this is a lot of the reason why I'm divorced. So it's like, why am I going to continue to entertain this and continue to try to like navigate this? Okay. Tell me this because something similar happened to me watching back 
and you see how Schwartz is behavior is and it's not changing. If anything, it's like getting worse and it's um, confirming everything you've been saying for however many years the show has been going on. Doesn't it kind of help you really move on? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. No, of course. Like it's just every now and then there's like moments of like, especially during the holidays, it was really a bit of struggle because, you know, it was the first like Christmas and everything that we spent not together. And so like there was all those like times of being like angry of just like, why couldn't he like this Mm -hmm. and that? But, you know, it doesn't take long for something to pop up some some kind of reminder and you know whatever yeah. and, then, and obviously like them watching the show because watching the show like I never really have a hard time watching the show back because it's like I know everything that's gone on and yeah sometimes I'll hear something that someone says I'm like oh that kind of sucks mm-hmm. but I truly had no idea how he was behaving or the things that he was saying behind my back and it was very hurtful like he was being very disrespectful like little things even just like yeah, just with conversations with Raquel or with Sheena. And I'm just like, that's just so unkind. Like, yeah. I, like, so it's just, so yeah, like it is, it is very reaffirming that. Yeah. Like I'm not, I don't know. Like when Raquel would just be like, yeah, your ex-wife like really just needs to get over it. And he'd be like, oh, oh. And I'm like, I would smack that person across the face. Raquel said, uh-oh, there's a siren. Eh. Katie, your your system, your programming didn't work. I know. We, well, we I was re- trying to get on your program. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, so Raquel goes up to Tom and says, "What? What does she say?" Um. No. Okay. So we're at Sir. It's like after we're we're doing like the sandwich tastings and everything, and she comes and sits down next to me, and she's like, "Yeah." She's like, "I just want to let you know your sandwiches are bomb," and I was like, "They're what? Bomb? Bomb? <laughs> yeah." Okay. I was like. Thanks. And, um, and you know, there was like another like rumor that her and Schwartz had like made out again at another bar. And I was like, and I text Tom about it. I was like, this is the kind of stuff I just don't need to be like sick to my stomach reading this shit all the time. Like this Mm -hmm. is, this is the kind of stuff I'm talking about. This is the kind of stuff I thought we wanted to avoid. That's just like, not like cool. Like every time I have to open up social media, it's like, I have to see this stuff. This is what I'm talking about. And she just is like, I just think like you just are gonna like rage text him all the time about this. Like, oh my god! Like, is it any like you divorce him? Like, is it any of your business? Like, what he does? And I'm like, are you for real? Like, and I'm trying to explain to her and get it through her thick skull, like that this wasn't like some high school dumb breakup. That this was like he was my husband. Like he was my like he still technically is my husband. Like we're not even divorced yet, and you're sitting here. You want to sit here and tell me like how much empathy do you lack? in your little measly life that you want to come here and tell me what is and isn't my business when it comes to my, you know, deterioration of, of my past relationship in the past 10 years of my life. You want to sit here and tell me what is in my business and, you know, and she's fucking Tom Sandoval and what, yeah, who's in a relationship with her very good. And then she wants to tell me that she doesn't appreciate me texting Tom about our dogs. And I just Mm -hmm. like, lose it on her like she rolls her eyes at my mom <gasps> oh yeah no no when it comes to the mom mm-hmm. when it comes to my mom we do not go there yeah my mom tells her to shut up it's amazing good. yeah no good but ariana is getting like very like ab- upset in this situation because she feels caught in the middle because you know raquel's she's friends like with yeah she's she's very close with raquel but she's close with me and she feels you know in the middle of it all but Sandoval's, of course, oblivious to that and is more concerned with, like, how Raquel is doing in this situation. And it's just, of course. But then Raquel's also going up to Ariana and, you know, wants to, you know, <laughs> talk about her relationship with Tom Sandoval and, you know, and compare it to hers with James and how, you know, she she's like, well, you know, I stay with James probably longer than I should have. Like, do you think that maybe, like, just almost trying to, like, like plant a seed in Ariana, like to maybe convince her that she to should break up. Yeah, it was. It is so twisted. It's so dark and twisted, and like, just I like you and I can't comprehend that. No, like I can't wrap my brain around. Okay, so this girl is my very good friend, 
and I'm fucking her boyfriend. I don't think anyone can wrap their head around this. No, there are definitely people who can. There are definitely people out there who can. Like a Raquel. Well, like, yeah, I but know. I think I think those are, yeah. There, are. Actually, I think there's more people like that than we even want to, you know, acknowledge. But they're very quiet. What? I think they're very they're staying very <laughs> quiet wherever they are. They are until they're not. So <laughs> I want to ask you this question because you and Tom, you guys still text. Of course, you guys have dogs together. You guys were together for 12 years. It's, it's kind of like you guys grew up together. You've been through everything together. You were married. But breakup advice for people listening or just for anybody should you stay friends with your ex? Do you think it's a situation that can work? I, I, I hate the idea of someone being so important to you in such a big part of your life and family at one point and them just becoming strangers. Like that, it feels so sad and unnecessary. Mm -hmm. But I think there needs to be boundaries. There needs to be communication. You can't, you can't just be, you can't remain the same level in each other's lives. You need to allow there to be, you know, that kind of distance and yeah. not overstep and really allow room for each other to do, you know, yes. their own thing. Like I, I was very supportive of Tom dating. Like I've had so many conversations with him about it. Cause he was like, it just feels like, so I can't even imagine dating. It's just like, Oh, oh. and I'm like, it's not like you need to go out and like, marry someone tomorrow, but you treat it as just like finding a new friend or just yeah. getting your feet wet a little bit. Like I had, I've had so many conversations about this. So like for anyone to say like, I don't want him to be with anyone is not true. No. I'm very, very supportive of him getting out there and, and how, wait, dating. How do people not see that? It's because, very because, clear because, to me when I watch. Because they're not saying it. What but do you mean they're not saying? Because it? you're not seeing those conversations. You're only. I feel like it's just so obvious. They're, Don't fuck the girl that I'm like, you know, <laughs> ten feet away from. They're just seeing me. Fuck a girl that I'm two hundred feet away from. Yeah, I just feel like there's so many girls in Los Angeles, you know, or like that. But I mean, or just like give it a little time. But um, I think I think you can be friends with your ex. I just think it takes a little time, and it does take amount of respect and and care you have to you all you do have to nurture that relationship as well and sort of navigate that space between one another right um but it takes time I think so I totally agree with that so Raquel is having like random makeouts with Schwartz or one or we don't know how many <laughs> while she's having sex with Sandoval yeah does Sandoval and I don't know if you know, even know this. Like, does that upset him? Does that irk him? I have a theory, and this is just my own theory. It's not confirmed or, like, just because I've literally sat and thought about this for so long because I'm just like, how did how did this all work out? Because I, I really don't think the three of them were in cahoots. Mm -hmm. I've talked to Tom about it, you know. And, I was going to ask you. Um, so the only thing I can come to is that, you know, Schwartz was just kind of like floating along. And, you know, Raquel and Sandoval were doing their thing, more impulsive than anything else really. And, you know, Raquel's like, well, I'm single, so I can make out with whoever. You, Sandoval, are with your girlfriend. You know, she's getting a little bit jealous maybe and so mm. when the idea of Schwartz comes along to make out with she's like "Ooh, there's an idea oh that makes sense to me so she decides to make out with Schwartz and like how what what better way to make the man you want to be with jealous than to make out with his best friend simply because you can't you know like he's single you're single yeah so she makes out with him at the wedding and I think that's the one person that would probably make Sandoval jealous. So I think that's a, at that point that Sandoval does maybe tell Tom mm -hmm. that like him and Raquel like hooked up or there's something going on. So that will make Schwartz back off. So Raquel can't pursue him. He's not going to pr pursue Raquel. That one, that clicked in my brain. That theory makes sense. Yeah. So, you know, then Schwartz is like not necessarily in cahoots, but he's at least going to like Mm hmm. Not. And you've asked Schwartz, like, what do you know? Yeah. And he's he is very like 
he maintains that he found out in March when we all found out. He's like, I found out like a month ago that something was going on. You don't know he, if you believe him. I just think he there's a little bit more than he like is has let on. Yeah, you know, and I don't, and I think he wants to try to remain like the good keep guy. His, keep his hands clean, but it's yeah. like I've been him and Sandoval have been like covering for each other's bad behavior for years yeah. so it's like dude it's not this is not it's not that far-fetched that you've known about this it's just it this makes it dirtier because it's Raquel and it's Ariana and they're friends and it's just it's way too close it's not like this isn't some like boys trip you went on and some bottle service girl that he hooked up with that you can like just like you know tuck this one away like this one this is this is a time that you probably should not have remained quiet on but I feel like he remains quiet on. Well, yeah. I mean, this is me trying to give him a little bit more <laughs> credit or benefit <laughs> of the doubt than he deserves. But, you know. Yeah. This is also why I stayed with him for so long because I just held him in a higher regard for a long time. That's, I got, when I posted that we were going to be recording, I got, I don't even know, hundreds, thousands of people writing in with questions for you. And one of them was, why did it take Katie? This is the very first one. Why did it take Katie so long to leave Tom? Um, she was in love. Yeah. No, I mean, I, for, I for one say. thing, yes. I like this was somebody I was really, really in love with. Like, and he's I, a good guy. Yeah. No, he, the thing is, like, I, we had a, there was a friendship there. There was, you know, there was a real relationship there. Like, at the end of the day, like, it wasn't like, off all the time. I had so much fun with him. We went on adventures together. Like there was all of that. And like, was kind of, I was blind to a lot of things. And a lot of that was what contributed to that was I didn't have a lot of, didn't have high self-esteem. My confidence was lacking. Mm -hmm. I, you know, just wanted to turn a blind eye to a lot of things. It wasn't until I started working on my own confidence right. and building myself back up that I was like, I kind of just like woke up inside my life and was like, what, Yep. is this like and it became just so apparent to me to the point I couldn't ignore it and been like you don't want this like right. you, you you know you deserve more like mm -hmm. you know that like long term like he's he's not going to he hasn't chose you he hasn't come to the table in the way that you want him to the way you've asked him to yeah you've done this yeah you've had the conversation like it just everything was like coming into focus in such a really profound way that hadn't before yeah. or it had but like I would just kind of brush it off and think like okay well maybe I don't know maybe once this uh, chapter or once this next year so I don't know I would just it was just easy for me to justify mm -hmm. things away so so quickly but you know it, it, it does become such a huge thing and a dilemma when you know the person that you are in love with like you couldn't um, ignore it any longer. Yeah. And then I'm like, well, what do I do? Because like, I love this person and this is supposed to be like my future, my forever. And like, I was just supposed to walk away from all this. Mm -hmm. Like that's a really difficult thing to do. But at the Very. end of the day, it's like, do I choose this, my future and this person and everything that we've built and you know, or do I walk away from it and choose myself and take the risk. And take the risk. But you know what? Be potentially like really abundantly happy in the way that I know I deserve to be even if that means being alone everybody that <laughs> deserves a fucking that's exactly like my breakup I was like is this what I want forever no be I want to yeah. put myself first and you know because it kills you more when the person that you choose every day and that you put so much time and investment into doesn't choose you like it was it broke it was it broke me down and I mean self-esteem issues I struggle with that right everybody does but when your partner mm -hmm. never chooses you that just like amplifies it yeah like I was a broken woman yeah. like just like that's that's the only way I can explain it I mean it sounds like such like a mm, thing but like that's no. the, that's the only way to describe it like again like when that person time and time again like doesn't that like, makes you feel worthless but, and you the, feel you start to look at yourself as being just a worthless right. person. And what makes it so confusing, and I'm assuming, and correct me if I'm wrong, the reason you stayed, you know, as long as you did, is because he wasn't doing that intentionally. He, he has a good heart. Yeah. 
and thought he was doing the right thing. So then you kind of justify it like, you know, well, he's like a good guy. And like it, there was no malintent behind it. Yeah. And so it's like all yeah. this confusion. Yeah. Cause he, he, I, he loved me. Yeah. He just, yes. he just didn't know how to be. He didn't know how to love you correctly. Yeah, exactly. And I don't know if he will know how to love someone correctly. Maybe he will. I hope Maybe best, he will, but, but he's got a lot of figuring out to do. Yeah. Yeah. He's I wish, a, he, I you wish, know, he is a, he is a very good guy. He's got, oh, I, I can tell. He has a good heart. He tell. loves, he, the things that he does for his family and mm-hmm. for people, like it, it is there. Mm-hmm. Like it, I, I, I can't say that he's not, but when it comes to being a partner and a husband, it's just, it takes a different kind of mindset and yeah. a prior and a, and a set of priorities that yeah. like, it just wasn't there that like I needed, I needed, I needed somebody to support me in ways that I just wasn't being supported. A hundred percent. And how old were you? Well, you guys aren't divorced yet. No, we are. Like officially? Yeah. Okay. And you're in your thirties and that makes it more scary for certain people. I'm about to turn 31. I don't think I, listen, I'm, I, this I'm is, not scared at all. This is the shit. I <laughs> love, wait, me too. I'm not scared at all. I feel the most confident, mm-hmm. excited I've ever felt to yeah. be single. This, if there was ever a time, it'd be, it'd be now. Like I don't, I know myself more than I ever have. Mm-hmm. I feel, yeah, I feel more confident now. I feel more settled. I don't, I don't give a shit about things that I used to. Right. The, 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 that don't matter, you know? So it's like, <laughs> it's, yeah. So I, I don't, I, yeah, I'm not scared. Okay. I feel excited. It's I'm, great. I'm literally thinking about us going <laughs> to dinner and drinks tonight, and I'm getting chills because we will be going home with five boyfriends. <laughs> Don't you feel that energy right now? I, every time I leave the house, <laughs> literally. <laughs> I, love, I love that shit. Being single in your 30s is the best shit in the world. Okay, so I do want to get to these listener questions. The last thing I want to talk about, because I find this – fascinating. I think it's very controversial, but I think it's something we should talk about you. So when this whole thing came out about Raquel fucking her best friend's man, Mm -hmm. she went to a mental health facility. Did she? Okay. So you said something about this. What did you say? Well, because she was asking for, you know, sympathies, essentially. Like, I felt, I feel like that was like, that was basically an ask for like, back off on the hate, this yeah. hate train of it all. And I was just like, listen, like, I said, when you are so morally bankrupt that you cause this kind of chaos, you better be equipped to deal with backlash. And if you're not, then get the help you need for sure. But like, don't ask for sympathies in the process of it all. So that is such a like bold statement. I remember Lala saying something similar, right? And it's like, I've seen this trend where people get canceled, which I do not believe in cancel culture. Hi, I've been fucking canceled big time, but I've seen people doing something very fucked up. And then they say, there's mental health issues. Leave me alone. I don't like that. I don't either. I call bullshit on it. If you, if you need, if you're, if you are suffering, always get help you need, but do not scapegoat it and do not like, don't, that's not the route to to take. I totally agree. I understand if you did something and people are bullying you. I mean, hello. I had thousands of people telling me to off myself every Mm -hmm. single day for like two months. Right. Yeah. Although I didn't really do anything wrong. I didn't like hurt anybody, but that's besides the point. Yes. If you want to, you know, seek, you know, help because of bullying or whatever, because of your actions, that makes sense. No one's saying you can't seek help. Yeah. By all means. Get it. Yeah. You can't just say, oh my God, I displayed all of this awful behavior because of, you know, something going on in my, going on in my brain. Mm -hmm. Right. Like it's just, it's, it's to me, it's, similar. It's like fucking Jeffrey Dahmer 
going to court and claiming insanity. Oh yeah. Right? Well, it, yeah, it's basically when anyone does commit that kind of crime with it, crime and, and trying to say I'm insane. It's like, well, yeah, clearly. But like you also are, like you can't. Where's the where's the culpability? Where's the yeah. accountability? Like what are like, we, what are we going to just be like? You know what? You're right, Jeffrey Dahmer. You know what? Go, go, go on out there. I understand that it cannot be easy dealing with the world Pro, like just hate like projecting hate onto you like mm-hmm. I understand that's got to be scary and intimidating and sucks yes I get it but when you've brought it on yourself because of your own actions yeah turn your phone on like like turn do what you have to do to not see it also there's, there's ways there's literally ways you can avoid that just by like literally <laughs> like throw your phone away like I have someone take your phone but also it wasn't a one-time offense well, someone else is, is like, well, haven't you ever made a mistake before? I'm like, a mistake? <laughs> You're calling this a mistake? <laughs> yeah, there's there's mistakes and then they're sleeping with your best friend's boyfriend. There was intentions. There was catching flights. Mm-hmm. There was active height. There was there was code names. There was there was so much. Oh, they had code names? Yeah, there there was this wasn't a mistake. Yeah. There was this was not just an oopsie daisy. This was right. th- this was full on mm-hmm. de- deception. And there was a lot of effort yeah. to keep this. Yeah. And, and 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 so it's like, so no, I there's there's not it was calculated. Yeah, it there, wasn't there's like a, exactly. So like so I'm gonna keep my sympathies for someone else. <laughs> That deserves it. Good luck. So, so yeah, if if you need if you need help to deal with this because it is troubling you, then by all means, but like keep it to yourself. Yeah. Do what you gotta do, but like do it over there. Yeah. We don't we don't need to know about it. hmm like, I don't want this to sound offensive, but <laughs> <laughs> there's been a lot of awful things Raquel's done. And the one thing that I can't like get out of my pants, head right now. The pants. Did you say the pants? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Which one? What are the pants? Oh, that she was wearing in the last episode? Uh, wait. No, I talked about one of her cropped hoodie things one time. Oh. She, she looked like Robin Hood. No, people were like having a hard time with her pants. Okay, no, nice. was- nice. We are nice girls and Raquel dresses very well sometimes, but... S- you know, she chose the wrong pants and a wrong hoodie one time. What were you going to say then? I was going to say <laughs> that she rolled her eyes at your mom. Yep. I can't. I no, like. She was so disrespectful. Was that bothers unreal. me more than anything <laughs> that I've heard, which yeah. is probably not okay no, she's, to say. She's made all Ariana, kinds of. I don't mean that. She's made all, ki- all kinds of comments. Or not all kinds, but she's made comments about my mom. She's like, oh my God. Yeah. I went there and like. Katie and her mom were like, tell me, she goes, now I see where she gets it from. Yeah, I got it from my mom. We'll both light you on fire. (laughs) (laughs) I feel like your mom on television just is a sweetheart. What has she done that's Nothing. She is so nice. Like, that's what I mean. It's like, what? What is your, what's your damage? Raquel needs to go to Mars. Raquel needs to go on Stars on Mars. Sandoval. She needs to go to actual Mars. (laughs) Okay. Okay. Let's get into these um, questions because there are 50 million and I'm going to pick out the best ones and we're just going to do rapid fire. Okay. Um, Has this brought the rest of the group closer together? I would say, yeah, I think. What? I was not expecting that answer. Really? No. It's brought you guys closer. Mm Mm-hmm. Really? The rest of the group, like, minus Schwartz, Sandoval, and Raquel. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. So everybody, but. Well, I mean, like, me and she have seen each other more than we have since last summer. That was another question <laughs> is, where do you stand with Sheena? So Sheena's definitely apologized. And, um, you know, watching the season back, she said that she's seen the hurt that I've gone through and everything. And I, and I definitely appreciate that, but you know, um, I'm someone that like, after all that, I'm like, okay, well, it was a lot (laughs) for me. Mm -hmm. Like I, and, and without being, you know, callous or something, I'm just like, okay, well, like it was 
a, a lot for me the, yeah. to, 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 to deal with everything. So it's like, I want, I of course would like to get to a better place, but like, it's going to take some time. And I like want to see like actionable, like yes. things behind Action items that behind the apology. Otherwise, you know, like apologies always need a, like actions behind them. You can't just, otherwise it's just like words, you yeah. know? So yeah. Actions speak louder than words. Mm-hmm. It's, Cliche, but it's but so we're true. in a much better place. Okay, than we were. <laughs> I like Sheena. I met her for like five minutes one time. Yeah. She's very sweet. Okay, <laughs> this one. Do we think Sandoval is paying people to come to his lame ass cover band shows post scandal? <laughs> I don't think he's paying them, but I think he's like definitely giving away tickets for free. Okay, so. Okay, so some of these I have not seen, so I'm like dying. Um, how and where did Ariana confront Tom? So, so what happened was Sandoval had a show at Tom Tom, his band was playing, and he was like doing something on the floor, like whatever, and his phone fell out of his pocket. And Ariana, like someone grabbed his phone and handed it to Ariana. So like, here's his phone. Da, da, da. And Ariana's just like, you know, women's intuition. Mm-hmm. So something like the siren went off in her head. She went to the bathroom, like went to like his photo or something. I don't, I, I don't know why she went to the photos or went to something, but she saw a video. Excuse me. And it was an inappropriate video. I'll say that. Of both of them or just her? Of the both. Stop. It wasn't even in like the hidden album. Do we know that? No, because it was from. So she was she was doing um, "Watch What Happens Live" the night before, or she, that night actually with Sheena, and so it was the night before they were like on Facetime or something. So they both of them had no shame, like zero fucks they about were, anyone. They were feelings. getting sloppy. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know what I want to do? The next guy I date, <laughs> I want to put him in a room with Raquel. <laughs> like that, that's how I'm going to test every single guy I date from now on. I feel like that's like the best way to do it. You just, you put them, like you throw a party and you somehow like seclude them in a room together and just see what happens and both liquor and like liquor them both up and then you'll know. Like, is this a guy oh I want to marry God, is, or not? That is a really... Raquel should have her own show, right? And, like, everyone can bring their guy and see... Her own, like, cheater show. Yeah. <laughs> like, do they pass the Raquel test? <laughs> How old is she, by the way? She's 28, I believe. Yeah, I think she just turned 28. That is alarming to me. I, like... Okay, I thought she was, like, 18. Um, <laughs> ooh, did you and Schwartz hook up after the divorce? No. Okay. Definitely not. Is Katie still seeing Satchel? No. <laughs> Wait, is Satchel Schwartz? No. Wait, what is Satchel? <laughs> what is that? So Was so, it a guy you dated? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm like, what? I thought it was what like is, a, you know, Benifer? No. Like Ben? No. So Satchel is the guy that I was seeing last summer. Okay, you're not anymore. No, no. We, well, we will be finding people tonight. <laughs> Oh, did Tom, did Schwartz cheat on you while you guys were married? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We just move yeah. on. Moving on. This one is the last one and I have no idea what it means. So decode it for me. Was Ken coming in, dropping the bombshell news real or staged? Ken? It was real. I mean, yeah. Ken? Ken is Lisa's husband. Oh, so. yes, yes, yes. Okay, I know Lisa's husband. Yes, Ken. Real? Yeah, okay, no. So yes. Lisa, I'm, I'm here. I'm here. Lisa had told him. So, I mean, like, yeah, whether Lisa, like, like told him to come and do that or not. But, like, stage is, like, what? Like, maybe Lisa, like, encouraged him to do But, like, yeah. or Ken, like, wanted to do that. I don't know. Like, Ken, like, gets, he gets to have fun with us as well. But, I mean, it was so bizarre. Like, we're in the kitchen making sandwiches, and he just, like, strolls in. He's like, I can't believe that Sandoval had Raquel and just choosy, and she spent the night. And then he just strolled off. I was like, we excuse me, <laughs> what the fuck? So he just walks in the kitchen, drops the bombshell. Just drops it. And I was just like, how do you know that? And just Lisa's like, I told him. And I was like, well, how do you know? 
how do you guys know these things? Yeah. Like, I, I don't even know these things. I was just with them yesterday. And, oh my God. and then Lisa explains that like Raquel showed up late to Sir and Raquel just was like, yeah, I was staying at Santa Claus last night. I'm like, they're what? just being so cavalier about this stuff. It's crazy. Yeah. Just so reckless. Like, yeah. if you're going to cheat. But at that time, like, they, no, but I thought like maybe because they they were just being so cavalier about it that I'm like, okay, well, they're just being so open about it. Maybe not, but it still just doesn't feel, it just like makes me feel kind of gross. And I don't know. I wouldn't be comfortable or down with that. Like this, with what? Their, like Tom Sandoval and Raquel's friendship was just Absolutely not. It was making me like. There are boundaries. It was like, I don't know. It's like kind of twisting my tits a little bit. I didn't like it. <laughs> twisting my tits. I used to be the cool girl that was like, oh my God, like, yes, me and my boyfriend and my best friend all sleep in the same bed together. I mean. Yeah. Okay, fine. If you, but when you're there, but how about when you leave town and your friend and okay, your boyfriend. Yes. But if you're exactly. like, but if you leave town and then they do that and you're like, yeah, but we do that all the time together. It's no. like, yeah, but now you're not there. No, you're exactly. Not, but now you're not in the bed with them. Any, <laughs> any like, you know, you guys getting together at any point. I need to be there, right? I Unless mean, it's in a let me put it this way. So, setting. like Stassi, who's like my best friend, is also ha- like very like close, like almost besties with Tom Schwartz. Mm-hmm. They could like go grab drinks together, of no course. problem, whatever. Like they, we could all hang out. Stassi had spent the night at our house. Sure, sure, sure. Were you there though? Yeah, but <laughs> would they do that? With me out of town? No. It no. just wouldn't be a question. Saucy would not be hitting up Schwartz to hang out with, oh, I'm out of town. That would just be, it I, just wouldn't even be an option. Exactly. Just because it's just it's like. It's fucking weird. Saucy would just be like, why? That would just I, be Sa- weird. Saucy would be like, I think I have other people I can hang out with. Yeah. Like, point. I'm not, I'm not going to hit up Tom when Katie's out of town. Like, I just, the optics are weird. It would just be like, I don't know. It just doesn't need to happen like that. Yeah. It's going to be very interesting next season because you guys are having a next season, which you guys are like looking for people, right? Lala says more stuff than I do. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Well, by the way, guys, breaking news. I'm going to be on it. Just kidding. I'm going on fucking stars on Mars. I'm going to talk to Schwartz. I'm very (laughs) interested to see how Raquel and Sandoval's relationship turns out. Because I don't Uh, think it's going to last very long. And on that note, I love both of you. I wish you the best. (laughs) And Katie, I love you so much. I love you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me on. Yes. And let's go eat something. Let's take shots. Whoa. Let's find men. Whoa. 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 (laughs) And um, where can they, where can everybody find you? Um, Find me just on like Instagram because I, I'm You don't do the TikTok, you know? Well, I'm a spectator on TikTok, but it's just, it's like way too much to keep up with. But you can find me at Music Kills Kate. On, Music kills Kate on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. My Park City, Utah bitch. I yes. love it. Okay, Sloots, I'll talk to you next week. Bye. 